Well, Matt's here in the studio along with Christopher Snowden from the Institute of Economic Affairs. First of all, Matt, thank you very much for being so honest about your own struggle there and for coming in to talk about it this evening. Um, Christopher, however, if I could just start with you, your reaction, and you'll be aware of the argument against these. Um, you can see how damaging it is from Matt's story to people's lives. It, it's an addiction. We can't just stand by and do nothing. Well, ban gambling altogether in that case. I mean, you can get somebody, unfortunately, who's played any form of gambling to give you a similar story. And that's the reality of it. And the big change over the last 20 years hasn't been people pouring into bookmakers. There are fewer bookmakers than there were in the 90s. It's been people going online. You can play these games online. We're not going to stop people uh, playing them online. I think it's better, um, both economically and just for um, people's well-being, if you like, if people can go to bookmakers. Um, because this is a techno technological change. People, unfortunately, are not betting on horses and dogs as, as much as they, they used to be. Uh, bookmakers are heavily reliant on, on these games because it's a technological solution to fight in some way with the online world. Matt, your response to that? Well, first of all, uh, fixed odds betting terminal customers, 43% of them are either problem or at-risk gamblers. And I think we have to look at the proportion of harm associated with each product. Um, Chris is right, there is a big problem with online gambling, but in this particular review, the government are looking at fixed odds betting terminals and I would obviously we're advocating a two pound cap and I mean it's backed by 93 local authorities it's backed by the Royal Society of Public Health the Labour Party um, and the you know the bookies say that it's vested in commercial interests well I don't think any of those organizations have those um, a lot of people will be watching this and say we have a moral duty to step in to certainly review it when you consider the vast amounts of money that you can lose in such a short period of time why not reduce that what's the problem well, I think you can have a discussion about that, absolutely. I mean, the, the current limit is £100. It's effectively £50, actually. For, you need a loyalty card and all sorts of things to play at £100. Most people don't anyway. Um, but, yeah, it's an arbitrary figure, obviously. Any any figure you have is arbitrary. But the reason these guys want £2 is because they know, they know nobody will play them at £2. This but isn't is just fair, about Matt? reducing their Do you think that arms? it's a kind of de facto way of basically banning it? Of course it is. Mm, not, not at all. I think that machines, that machines do belong in bookmakers, but in every other easily accessible location, uh, such as a bingo hall, arcade... Adult Gaming Centre, the machines are capped at £2 a spin. And betting shops are for, are for betting, they're not for casino gambling. Uh, and casino games are highly addictive, so to uh, put these machines on the high street, particularly in deprived areas, I think is a recipe for disaster. It is always in deprived areas that you find a proliferation of these, isn't it? Is that not questionable? It's in working class and urban areas, yeah, that's where bookmakers have, have are, always been. have the most to lose. Well, that may well be, but I mean, this is this is how, how it's always been. Bookmakers always thrived in working class areas. People used to bet on horses, now they're, they're betting on other things. That's just change. And you, can, you can't really put this genie back in the bottle. This is really my point. People will go online and they'll be using websites that not, aren't necessarily paying tax in this country. And I just think we should, we should ask for a higher bar of evidence if we're going to do something, which actually is going to have quite a profound effect because the bookmakers um, subsidise horse racing. So this is not only going to make, I think, most bookmakers close, it's going to be very bad for the horse racing industry. The government's going to have to find another £400 million of tax, which we're all going to end up paying. And for what, really? People will just end up going online anyway in an even less regulated Is that a fair point, Matt? I think the, the, the tax issue has to be looked in, in the context of these machines and their impact on the economy as a whole. So if the money goes into the machines, then it creates, for every billion pounds that goes in, uh, 16,000 jobs are destroyed. And obviously you heard that in the VT. Um, so I think you have to look at the, the impact of revenue on the economy as a whole. You can't just look at the 400 it's million in isolation. It's not being recirculated into the local economy. Local it economy. had been described as a job destroyer. They gave the quote, didn't they, that for every billion pounds being spent on these fixed odds betting terminals, it reduces employment by 16,000 jobs per year. Yeah, I think these statistics are, are rather dubious, and you could probably make the same kind of arguments about, about any form of gambling. Um, you know, the, the, the quote you read out before is quite right. It's only 13% of all the uh, gambling spend in the country. You can say maybe we, as a country, spend too much on gambling, but be that as it may, it's only 13%. Um, it's only going to be dislodged to other gambling products if we try and effectively ban these machines, which is what's being discussed. And lots of people are going to lose their jobs. These are, I don't know about you know, the, the, the theoretical modelling, but these are real jobs, and these, they, they really will go if we we, uh, do this. The biggest job destroyer in the betting industry is fixed odds betting terminals. It, in the last 10 years, uh, 10,000 jobs have been destroyed while the number of shops has actually gone up.
So, so that just that tells its own story. You don't need people, don't need to employ anyone to operate machines. I think it's safe to say you're not going to agree this evening. A tough job for the for the government. They're going to have to look at this. They're expected to release their findings in the next few weeks. It was expected at the end of October, but we're expecting a bit of a delay on that. Christopher Snowden from the Institute of Economic Affairs and Matt Zulkobert Cousins. Thanks very much indeed. Thanks.